Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Boris Kipchiev. I'm a principal solutions architect at Nirmata. Uh, we are here today to discuss why uh, recently terms are, uh, such as platform engineering, platform as a service, internal developer portals, etc. have caught much of the limelight in both uh, internal organizational discussions, but also whenever um, we chat with our peers at conferences. Uh, I will introduce what I believe to be a solid foundation uh, for uh, these con new concepts and how we can help you introduce them within your organization with as little friction as possible. Let's dive in. Uh, you know, the rise of platform engineering is inevitable. Um, Gartner ha is putting it at 80% likely that any serious software development organization will establish a team of platform engineers by 2025. But before we get to uh, what Gartner says, uh, let's talk about why uh, there's a need for a shared foundation. As you move into the cloud native uh, na landscape, uh, you know, being able to being able to enable cross-team functionality is uh, necessary and uh, definitely a requirement by the nature of how complex software architectures have become. Uh, that is where platforms kind of emerge as the natural problem solvers for uh, what is surfacing out of these elastic de developmental and delivery uh, expectations that software teams are uh, coming to expect. Uh, somebody has to run uh, these new platforms and thus platform engineers and generally engineering has kind of burst onto the scene. Uh, I believe we've all seen a lot of artifacts being produced by the various CNCF working groups and technical committees uh, as well as obviously talks and uh, such as the one that I'm giving today. So let's talk about where does a platform fit in uh, in an organization, right? Uh, it generally is the glue layer between your underlying low-level infrastructure and your in internal end user. Uh, usually those are your product team, your service teams, uh, and your security teams. Uh, what a platform does is it ties it all together, uh, ties all the internal tooling from these separate teams into a single working catalog with a single entry point allowing you to consume all of these different disparate tools uh, and uh, allowing you to offer them as a service uh, thus allowing people outside of a specific team or outside of a specific part of the organization to be able to already leverage the work that others have done uh, so this kind of middle layer sandwiched in between uh, the actual services and the infrastructure is where platform engineer will and platform teams will spend most of their days. Ensuring that no matter who wants to consume what, uh, there is a unified and singular location where they can go and find what they need. All right. Um, so what, what are the responsibilities of this kind of emerging new class of engineer, right? Uh, what does the day in the, uh, in the life of a platform engineer potentially look like? Um, well, it is complicated. Uh, they tend to be responsible for designing, implementing, and continuously improving uh, these platforms in order to kind of uh, fit within the demands of your internal customers. So in order to accomplish that, they have to integrate tools to enable all of these different um, groups to self-serve their needs and be able to consume these cross tools, cross team tools um, at once. Uh, they have to provide support for the platform. They have to work with every team in order to establish what does it mean to have best practices, as an example. Uh, what are the common accepted defaults that we should have 
no matter where, what, and how we um, stand up a new stack, uh, implement a new tool, uh, introduce a new feature uh, into our uh, catalog. Uh, they also have to establish what the security policies are for uh, these platforms and across all of these different tools, uh, as in who can do what, when, and keep an actual audit trail so when uh, we need to answer these questions, we are able to. Not only that, but with the ever-involving legal side of uh, our world, uh, compliance with things like uh, GDRP, HIPAA, PCI, or if you want to implement NIST 800 series uh, controls, as an example, uh, you need to be able to uh, ensure that every tool and everything that you are consuming is actually uh, not falling out of compliance with these standards. If all of these things weren't enough, uh, we need to monitor the, this uh, new platform and all of its pieces. We need to keep optimizing it in order to fit in the continuously evolving needs of all of these different teams. And if all of that was not enough, we got to keep it all up to date. So, um, you know, that can be a little overwhelming uh, to think about, you know, uh, oh man, this is a lot of pieces, a lot of moving pieces. How and why uh, are you trying to convince me that this is better than what we have right now? Um, well, you know, this is definitely one of the most common questions that I uh, get asked whenever I discuss this topic. You know, what, why does this matter to me? Uh, and, you know, one of the central driving tenets of innovation uh, within the CNCF and all of its project uh, is uh, that it it can be tied to probably four core tenets, right? Uh, we want to reduce complexity in order to save money. Uh, we want to increase the rate of innovation within our organization in order to make more money. We want to eliminate any barriers between teams uh, and in thus increasing their rate of innovation. And then we want to make sure that whatever resources we're provisioning and paying for, we are utilizing to our maximum, thus reducing the complexity. Um, tying all of these pieces together is, uh, you know, uh, opening up kind of finally a new space, uh, you know, we to where we can use this unified platform to accomplish all of the above. We can bring the, at that point, we can actually start bringing in, you know, uh, risk reduction and some other uh, benefits of uh, beyond kind of the monetary uh, piece to all of this. So what are the requirements of a cloud native platform? So. You know, I don't know uh, how many people go to the landscape page uh, anymore, but I remember back in the day, uh, I'm gonna age myself as a gray beard. Uh, I remember when the page would encompass a single single screen and there was no need for a zoom button in order to kind of look at all of the, the, the CNCF had to offer and all of the different projects. But these days, uh, that is no longer the case. This is a good thing. Um, however, it, again, it can be a little daunting to look at, wow, that is so many projects, which ones are the, where should I start? How do I solve the blank page problem? Um, so by looking at everything that I've talked about so far, it can ultimately be, ultimately be summarized as a need for projects which hit some of the following criteria, right? Uh, it should be composable. Uh, this, you know, uh, this means that we are not stuck with a static design. It means that we can change the platform, we can change the um, our design as necessary to evolve and not be 
uh, kind of confined to a singular uh, singular space. Uh, it does not lock us into a specific low-level infrastructure provider. Uh, portability is never something that anybody has frowned upon. Uh, it should use only battle-tested components from the CNCF portfolio. Uh, having a vibrant community uh, to lean on is a must. Uh, obviously, a lot of companies emerge from all of these projects, but it all starts with having uh, a user base before you have to deal with uh, commercials. Uh, it, w whatever project we use, it should be flexible and extensible. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, composable uh, and, and non-static design is uh, inevitable. That means that we need to make sure that whatever comp components we're choosing are also as flexible and are able to uh, help us mold with minimal friction the uh, new designs that we may encounter. And finally, it should be uh, Kubernetes native, uh, right? Uh, I make this joke quite often at this point, uh, but if you really wanted to, uh, you could run Kubernetes on your phone, right? It is that ubiquitous uh, in our lives, whether we know it or not. All right, um, so one of the great benefits of the CNCF is the various working groups and uh, technical advisory committees uh, and groups, which produce a lot of uh, forward thinking, uh, but more importantly, they unify and give us a common language uh, to use when discussing new concepts and uh, new ideas. Um, the CNCF has uh, purchased, uh, or not purchased, I'm sorry, um, has uh, created uh, through the app delivery tag, a platform maturity as well, a model as well as a glossary. Uh, personal note, I did, uh, lend a hand in the creation of both, uh, but they are 100% necessary because there is a need for guideposts and actionable markers to use when navigating a platform journey. Uh, this is especially important in these early stages of platform engineering when the lack of common language, as I said, it can cause a lot of confusion uh, as different teams are trying to, you know, uh, convey their needs and uh, convey their wants. So, uh, with all that said, uh, we need something similar to what the infamous lab stack did for the early internet age. Uh, we need a defined starting point that anyone can run anywhere and by extension, it can provision, update, govern uh, what you're trying to do. Welcome to the back stack. So like the LAMP stack, uh, the back stack aims to offer kind of a predefined, co cohesive, um, as I already mentioned, you know, battle tested and vibrant selection of the CNCF project. Uh, specifically chosen to serve as the building blocks for modern platforms. Uh, this, you know, to bring us back to the question of why does this matter to me? Um, we want to increase innovation. We want to leverage a predefined framework. Developers can focus on building features uh, function and functionalities quicker. Uh, instead of like researching and integrating and figuring out how to connect all of these different uh, disparate tools. We want to reduce complexity. Uh, the Backstack aims to simplify the decision-making process for developers and architects by giving you this predefined set of components. Uh, we are leaning into the need for increased inter interoperability uh, which the stack, you know, uh, is trying to choose components that are known to work well together, and thus ensuring smoother integration and fewer compatibility issues uh, down the line. 
Uh, and finally, I think I have mentioned this quite a few times now, but like the community support and longevity is extremely uh, important. Um, so we are leaning into well-adopted CNCF projects, uh, thus, you know, uh, benefiting from strong communities and proven track records, uh, which ensure continued support and development of these projects. Uh, we are trying to make sure that we are, uh, leaning into the, uh, uh, the top choices from each category we see as uh, very important. All right, so let's talk about the actual individual components. Uh, first, uh, we have backstage. Uh, if we refer back to the Gartner model, that is your developer portal. That is where your end users enter and uh, view what is available to them to consume. It allows them it allows them to uh, pick and choose the blocks that they need for their Lego set, their Lego build, uh, without having to know uh, the intricacies of how uh, the implementation details. Uh, Argo CD is the de facto GitOps uh, Kubernetes native keeper of truth. Uh, we are also leaning into it and ensuring that all GitOps uh, flows through uh, Argo, and uh, which allows us to ensure a consistent state and auditability trail uh, as we function within the, the stack. Uh, next up, we have Crossplane. It is our or orchestrator. Uh, it ensures that we are able to provision across any provider uh, that you might want, and thus making sure that you're not a vendor locked in uh, to a specific low-level infrastructure, um, which, again, uh, I don't think anybody has ever complained about not being vendor locked in. Excuse me. Uh, and finally, we have Kiverno. Uh, Kiverno ensures that everyone behaves as expected and desired. Uh, everything from uh, new applications being deployed that have to pass uh, the security and compliance checks that we talked about earlier, uh, such as HIPAA or PCI or GDRP, uh, to uh, being able to define uh, such things as micro segmentation or zero trust within the different components and different applications that we are running on the clusters. All right. Um, so why 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 the need for a reference architecture, right? Um, we have designed the backstack to not be rigid and or static. Uh, it is a designed to be adaptable and customizable. Uh, think of it as a toolbox with various knobs and levers that you can uh, use to tailor the platform to your specific requirements. Uh, so like while we recommend a core set of tools, you're not limited to them. You can swap specific components uh, or plug new components in in order to fit your needs, right? Uh, the Again, the point being to solve the blank page problem. Uh, where do I start? How do I start? Uh, you know, somebody has done the legwork of giving me a proper uh, first building block. Um, we don't think that the back stack encompasses every aspect of a platform. Uh, you can integrate additional tools to in integrate functionalities beyond the core components. Uh, as seen in the, some of the previous slides and some of the discussion that uh, we've had so far, the landscape is vast, right? Uh, there is not one tool that fits all. Uh, we chose each component specifically because it offers customizability. 
Uh, you can adjust settings to optimize performance, to uh, fit security models, uh, to augment GitOps practices, uh, to provision and define APIs that do not currently exist. Uh, at the end of the day, the idea behind everything that is within the stack is giving you the tools to align better with your environment. So let's put it all together. What does this look like from a technical perspective? Um, we are uh, referring to this as the hub and spoke design. Uh, with, you know, uh, the idea being that the design is capitalizing on Kubernetes and the elasticity, scalability that it provides, which gives us uh, the ability to, you know, um, have a unique set of clasps around the development, deployment, and data management uh, of of your uh, organization. Uh, with this uh, central kind of data hub, uh, this is where uh, the hub and spoke begins in aka the hub cluster. Uh, the hub is the single source of truth. It provides foundational data and services to the surrounding applications, uh, aka the spokes. The spokes uh, can be, you know, uh, its own clusters with its own specific applications. Uh, the uh, spokes are fully isolated from one another, which means that, you know, uh, by utilizing, again, uh, all of the components uh, with Caverno and Argo, um, etc., we can make sure that not only are you able to create a micro segmentation of applications within the cluster, but you can also create a segmentation between the specific clusters uh, or group of clusters. So you're never having to deal with uh, noisy neighbors. You never have to worry about, oh, how am I going to achieve multi-tenancy? How am I going to achieve, uh, again, something like zero trust if I want to um, by providing you know, uh, a base set of uh, policies that we believe everybody should, at the very least, uh, kind of start with, um, you are able to know for sure that your, uh, your journey is uh, in safe hands, if, uh, if you will. Uh, and again, uh, all of it is kind of governed through Git and everything is code. Uh, if you go in our repository, you will see that you know, uh, even provisioning and consuming uh, things to Brackstage ultimately end up tying to your Git repository, which is important as we work through um, kind of the auditability and why did something happen at this particular time. Uh, this is also very very important as you bring in new members, whether it's on the consumption end, aka your developers and product teams, etc., but also on the platform end, whenever you have to uh, bring in a new member of the team and have them uh, interact and understand, hey, why, how did we do this thing at this particular moment in time? What was the state of the system, uh, etc.? All right, so uh, how did, should you get started? Uh, I believe there are a, you know, a, a set of logical steps to follow here. Uh, before jumping in and immediately running to our website and downloading everything, assess your specific needs. Uh, understanding the, pop, the problems you own, aim to solve uh, will help you customize the back stack effectively. Like consider what level of platform engineering your or platform engineering maturity your organization has achieved uh, go to the tag app delivery uh, maturity model and you know 
go through the the process of understanding what level do you believe your organization is at uh the back stack is ideal for those that are level two or above uh step two right once you've gathered kind of some of the requirements that you have uh get to know each component of the back stack right uh explore backstage argo cross and converno all of them offer on their own a multitude of augmentations um customizations as we said uh etc this will be crucial whenever it comes time to integrate with the non off the shelf components that your organization is consuming uh creating uh etc you do not have to be an expert in backstage argo crossplane or caverno uh however understanding their purpose etc and architectural fit will be crucial uh three step three and four are kind of uh you know um self-explanatory but obviously just jump in go to our website follow the documentation stand up a sandbox play around with it understand it before um before inviting others to consume uh you know uh consume what you have done uh while you're playing in your sandbox you know make sure that you experiment uh break things uh play with the different configurations uh play with the integrations uh use different cloud providers as each cloud provider has their own uh kind of requirements and flows uh deploy some of the add-ons that we have out of the box to spoke clusters uh configure some security policies and then from that point on once you're comfortable with those things uh begin evangelizing i don't think i can highlight this enough but you have to ultimately internally uh become a bit of a salesman all right you have to find and encourage a select uh development select group of development teams to kind of familiarize themselves and try to consume the backstab uh, have them start with the built-in workflows, right? Uh, more often than not, uh, organizations need cluster as a service to, you know, is a very popular workflow that we have. Another one being namespace as a service uh, to allow you to do kind of multi-tenancy within all these new clusters that, that you are provisioning. <coughs> Excuse me. And finally, uh, start hacking away at, at, at the at the stack modify it fit it for your organizational needs um and then don't forget to contribute those prs back to uh, the repository uh we are building the community uh you know uh today we're working on with multiple kind of vendors who are donating time but we're trying to create a new vibrant community to work with us and help us guide uh, the project as we try to evolve it and, you know, add new features and new improvements, etc. cetera. Uh, come join the conversation. All right, um, so let's just kind of summarize uh, a little bit of what we've talked about today. Um, platforms have arrived. Platforms are here to stay. Uh, they're not going anywhere. Platform engineering engineers are a new uh, a new engineering level and title that is tasked with wrangling these new platforms. Uh, platform engineers, due to kind of the uh, how young all of this is, do need to solve the blank page problem. Uh, they need a solid foundation to start with and be able to uh kind of bring uh the four pillars that we talked about er earlier reduce complexity thus saving money increase the rate of innovation thus making money eliminate any barriers between teams you know thus increasing their rate of innovation and number four make sure that whatever resources are provisioned and utilized are utilized to the maximum thus reducing complexity uh, by embracing the reference architecture you can actually 
foster the collaboration, efficiency, secure development of environments that are needed in order to uh, stay compliant, in order to, uh, again, um, continue to drive those four pillars. <clears throat> um, join us, you know, uh, join us on backstack.dev. That is where uh, a lot of our documentation lives. That's where our blog is, uh, the, where you can keep up with news and happenings um, on important topics as we are uh, continuing to mature the platform. Uh, join us on Slack. We are on the CNCF Slack under hashtag uh, Backstack. Uh, come chat with me and the other maintainers. Uh, I love picking people's brains as I, by no stretch of the imagination, believe I'm the smartest person in the room. I like chatting to other smart people that are trying to solve similar plot problems to me. Uh, as I said, hop on GitHub, throw a PR. Uh, we need all the help you can get. Um, and finally, if you're going to be at KubeCon uh, 2024 uh, in Paris this year, uh, come chat with the, some of the maintainers of the projects. Uh, almost all of us are going to be there. We would love to see people uh, in person and have a conversation. Uh, thank you all for listening and have a great day. <laughs>